Hi, I'm Mark, and on this episode, the first in a series of videos on Gizmo's power systems, we're going to take a look at the solar, the shore power, the DC to DC charging systems that both of those use, and the differences between a standard split charge system. Uh, we'll take a look at our batteries and uh, all of the other auxiliary accessories that go along with it. Um, so I hope you'll find this interesting in this first of a series of videos, uh, which will probably be broken up. Uh, one from a trip into Utah, showing the solar system, some of that, how it goes. Uh, the other will be just grad work here, uh, like we're starting off now. So hope you find this interesting and let's take a look at it as an overview. To start off, I think what we're going to do is head through all of the individual components of the system and just give a general overview of what <clears throat> and how they work. Uh, as well, we'll also take a look at a day in the uh, process of how everything works for us. I think that's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> at times we can use a pretty heavy amount of power uh, from a full 15 inch laptop to a water pump to cooling a fair bit of water. Now let's start with the batteries. I think they're kind of the core of the system. They, I carry three batteries on the systems. Let's go take a look. As you can see, there's not a lot of room under the hood of the Jeep. We have three batteries on board the Jeep. One red top group 34 Optima and two yellow top Optima group 34 batteries. We have a custom made bracket on this side of the Jeep for the two under the hood and the third battery, which is the other yellow top, which is behind the platform on the driver's side behind the seat. The third battery or the second Optima is gonna be hard to see. It's behind the driver's seat and it is attached to the floor. You can see the strap. I'm gonna to try to get in here a little closer. You can see better. Uh, Those red connectors, if you're curious what they are, they're Anderson power pole connectors, and I have three of them. That's because my main solar er, and power panel is here. Uh, it is wrapped around the fridge and it can be removed f quite easily. So, uh, and, and if you haven't noticed, our fridge is fixed behind the driver's seat. The two Optima batteries that we have in our system are a red top and a yellow top. The red top, has a resting voltage of 12.75 and the yellow top has a resting voltage of 13.1 volts. A standard alternator that puts out 13.8 to 14.4 volts can charge, no problems, the red top. But because of the higher resting voltage of the yellow top and many other modern AGM batteries, it is unable to get it above 12.75. About more than 25% of the reserve capacity in the batteries is in the top end. So it, it, it just doesn't work. And that's why a lot of people don't get the expected reserve out of the batteries. That's why you need the charge voltage of 14.5 to 14.75. You need that voltage to be applied until they take less than an amp. The important thing to understand is that the two Optima batteries are not connected and can have a completely outside loop of the standard vehicle systems, which this is the battery for. I think people who are familiar with the split systems would be asking at this point, how do you boost your battery if the main one goes down? The answer is, we don't, unless we make a physical modification or we physically jump one side to the other. We'll get into this more later on when you understand the system and how it works a little bit better. But right now it might be a bit confusing. The next piece and most one of the most important I think is my shore power system. This is a daily driver vehicle and to be quite honest for the first while we kind of you always have to maybe take the cooler out or unload it because it's continually working the batteries and if the, let's say the Jeep was to sit in the garage or outside for a few days and not go anywhere, 
you could pull the batteries down or you got to empty and turn the cooler off and charge it. It's no different than another cooler. This AC plug here is a twist lock plug. It just twists and opens. Uh, and what happens is that I can unplug the AC power from coming in and this is where it's distributed to simply, I've just simply got the two uh, cables coming into here. Uh, this one goes to the fridge. The National Luna, when it sees AC power, switches to AC automatically. This is really handy. There's no special brains required. It sees AC, it goes from DC to AC. I plug the vehicle in and it goes to AC off of DC, right even, and it doesn't miss a beat doing it. This is a 36 watt solar panel. Uh, it sits on the roof. It is permanently in the system. Uh, only removed when I put the uh, two 100 flexible solar panel out. So that's two 100 watt solar panels. But this one sits and runs all the time. I simply unplug it and plug the other solar panels in, which they're done there when I need them. I don't always have them out and I just switch the plug over. It's easy to get up here and just change it, unplug. I didn't want to switch. The voltages are different. Uh, but 36 watts goes a long way over the days when the vehicle is just sitting out in the sun to keep the batteries more topped up. They won't fully do it, but it, it really takes the loss away. These two solar panels are uh, flexible uh, monocrystalline solar, uh, which is probably the best for this type of application. It can handle some shade. Currently, they're not getting a lot of sun, but they're very thin as far as flexibility. They're not overly flexible, but they come pre-wired. They just use a simple set of Y connectors, as they're called. Positive and negative go into two positives, go into the positive terminal. I simply use a cable that I've prepared. One thing that you won't see here, but is here, is that I have another 25 foot. This is 25 foot. I have another 25 foot cable that allows me to extend them out another 25 feet. So that gives me 50 feet of reach from where that plug is on the roof uh, in any direction to put the panels. If for some reason I'm in some trees or I want to move them around during the day because it's a difficult site. The next thing that's kind of I've noticed is really nice and very handy to have. It gives me an idea what's going on. I don't need to know every minute, but it is nice to know when you're parked what you're doing with your power. And this is a NASA, NASA BM-1, and it's a power management system, which really doesn't manage anything. It just tells me what's going on. When I go to here, that tells me I'm 60% and I have about 31 hours at this draw. And that's at running. Now it'll go up. We're running right around 50% capacity. This 12 position fuse holder is for my auxiliary side. I haven't put a lot of auxiliary lights in uh, to the vehicle. Uh, you know, camp lights as they were called, just because I've got some pretty good lanterns and I always thought I'd put them in, but I haven't had a real, felt a real need. I was going to put some other power in the tent and stuff, which I haven't done, but I've got plenty of capacity to do that. This panel here is, that's a six position. It's a blue C as well. This, this is the vehicle side or the uh, start side. This is my Samlux inverter. It is a 300 watt uh, pure sign uh, inverter. That's all the power I really need uh, for uh, charging a laptop. It's uh, they don't they don't normally draw more than 90 watts, but I do have a charger for the drone batteries as well that runs on this. It can all run at the same time, and that's all I need. I have my AC inverter tied into the house side uh, fuse panel. It's important to have it there. These three CTEC pieces are at the core of our power system. The top piece is a 25 amp smart charger that is connected to AC. It has up to nine steps in a very sophisticated charge, and it has the ability to increase the voltage to the necessary level. The middle piece is a D205 dual, as they call it. And what that is, is that is the same thing as the AC charger, this takes the alternator power or solar power, which is all DC, and uses that to adjust the voltage to the necessary levels. This is the key. This is a DC to DC charger. 
The other feature that's really kind of nice is the D250 will pulse charge the start battery when there's excess power. The bottom piece is a smart pass. It is a management system and kind of controls where the voltage goes and it can turn certain things off and turn them back on. When it's connected directly to the dual DC to DC charger, it brings the charging voltage capability from 25 to 100 amps, which is a serious amount of power. We're about 10 minutes later and um, you notice the 1.3, actually 2.6 now, we're already charging upwards as high as 2.6 amps. The fridge isn't running, but it gives you an example and you notice the uh, percent has climbed a bit and we're up around uh, 70 percent. Uh, we're getting our voltage up to about 12.75 and uh, we'll get there. It's, it's starting to happen. Okay, so it's about quarter after 10 now. We started at about uh, 7.30 this morning. Uh, you can see we've made quite a change already. Uh, we're getting the fridge is running. It's cooling itself down. And we are still producing 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 amps power. So we're over almost 5 amps of charge at this point, even this early in the morning. We're back up, our system is back up to about the high 80% range already of capacity. And we're sitting at about 12.9 system volts. So it'll go higher than that as the day goes on. It'll, it'll even go up probably as high as 14 to 15 volts actually, if the battery system requires it. But right now we're making lots of power. The other thing of note that uh, at quarter after 10, it's already 77 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't be surprised if we crowd in on 100 today. But uh, so it would be a really good test because the fridge is going to run a lot. Uh, we'll probably cool over the day, quite a bit of water as well. Maybe go through through a few pops or whatever. But again, 77 is going to be a nice day. Well, it's 5 after 11 and our system voltage is now up to 13.1 and we're producing 6 amps, 5.9, 6. The fridge isn't running at the moment and we are charging an iPhone, uh, but 6.3, we're just getting into the full power of solar today. We're getting even as high as 4.2, but you'll see subtle things in the sky will change and it'll kind of drop off, climb back up. It's never 100% the way it works. Um, as far as state of charge, we're sitting at about 90% right now. Uh, uh, sorry, 89, good guess. Um, it's saying at this rate would take about two hours to charge. Um, that's what it's take because we're in state of charge at the moment. And uh, it's stating about 2.2 hours at this rate uh, will fully bring us up. Okay, it's just after 12 p.m. And uh, I've been working on moving some data off of some SD cards on my laptop. So I'm running the laptop off the inverter, making sure the battery is fully charged, and also the um, portable hard drive. We're also charging an iPhone, which is just bringing it up to full charge because we're going to try to fly the drone a bit later. And of course, it likes to be, it nags you if it's not too charged. Okay. Sun shifted a bit, of course, high noon, right? And uh, I've lowered the one side of the awning. Uh, it's a great way to store, uh, place your solar panels. Uh, there, it's, it could be a bit lower, but uh, we're getting more than enough charge at this angle. So we did lower that just to keep it up with the angle of the sun. And let's just take a look and see what we got going on. Our voltage charge is... Uh, 13.2 now in the system. We're charging at 5.9 amps comfortably and consistently, which is nice to see. Uh, let's go to time. It's saying we're about an hour and we're at 95% capacity of the batteries. Uh, we should be done. If we get a few more amps, that's going to hurry up. If, and that's, don't forget, with those other items running. And remember, the inverter's running and there's probably 
it won't be 90 watts, but I'm sure the laptop with the drive in there's pulling maybe 50 watts. And then we've got a DC load charging the iPhone. So we're doing good. Okay, so it's uh, quarter after one and we have um, a temperature of 94 degrees. It's gotten quite a bit warmer and uh, I think uh, it's a hot day. We're sure feeling it outside. We're in the shade, but uh, wow, what a nice day. Okay, so the system, as you can see, is at 100% and we're sitting at actual Optima battery charge voltage is 3.1 and it's trickle charging right now at about uh, 1.5 amps. The systems brought it down, even though the solar panels will do more. It's kind of just in trickle charge mode right now. Maintenance mode. It'll eventually quit. It's given it a little extra burst here, um, but it'll, it'll move around here. But anyway, yeah. So we've recovered here and uh, on a day when the fridge pretty much was working hard. You'll notice that the system kind of gives you an indication when you're charged. This one's always a little bit more. Uh, so it's saying we have 104% zero hours to full is charging. So really it's saying that the batteries have pretty much peaked out and uh, are there. It's still in a charge mode at 13.3 but it's really not adding any more to the batteries in any meaningful way at this point but uh, it'll continue to top up and try and uh, I think we've got one iPhone charging here as well so maybe that's partly why the system is putting some amps in so the other thing it will do is although they're completely not connected the system will um, pulse charge back and uh, it is doing that as well at this point uh, just topping up the main start battery and keeping it tended. Uh, we've been in and out of the vehicle all day, so uh, it's probably down just a little, but it'll continue to attempt to do that. As you can see that the system has maintained the start battery at basically full charge rate, and uh, which in the voltage is uh, at the correct voltage to be considered fully charged. The, the uh, fridge just kicked on, I can hear it in the back. That's why that light just dropped a little bit because of the load on the system and still maintaining full charge. Um, so we're definitely in a, in a good situation. Like I said, this is the only uh, situation where the uh, National Luna system is left in the vehicle. I cut the cable and rewired in a way that would suit me better. Um, I will... Um, uh, go into the other portion of what I wanted to talk about in the next video and that is the um, what's actually happening in the charging systems to allow deep cycles like the Optimas and the uh, Odysseys and some of the other deep cycle batteries that are used today. They, they require additional attention than a standard battery and, and the National Luna system and other split systems just don't do that. Um, there's many different versions of those out there, but they really don't take the deep cycle batteries, the AGMs, and other types as well. The lead crystal is a similar profile in charging, so it falls under basically the same requirements to get it charged. Um, there's very few chargers that are specifically for it. But we'll talk about that in the next uh, video. I'm going to make two of this, but just because of the detail I want to go into.